Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arshana Solanki. Here are the headlines we're tracking this evening. A late recovery lifts the Lal Street. Nifty hits a record high for the fourth straight day, even as bank stocks see profit booking. Brasim Industries enters the paint business with Birla Opus, inaugurates three plants in Haryana, Punjab and Tamil Nadu, says products will be available in these states by March. Plans three more factories in Bengal, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Group chairman Kumar Mangalam Birla says they are, they are eyeing 10,000 crore revenue in their paint business within three years. Mahindra Group closely contemplating entering the EV cell manufacturing segment. Sources say that the group is considering two to two states as likely locations to set up a plant. Add that getting a PLI approval would be a major factor in the company making its decision. Karnataka High Court refuses to block the Baitu's uh, shareholding meeting scheduled for tomorrow, but any outcome of the meeting will be subject to the court's orders. Investors in crisis hit edtech companies say they will press ahead with the proposal to oust Baiju Ravindran as the CEO. Farmers suspend the march to Delhi till tomorrow after a 24-year-old protester dies at the Haryana border due to head injuries. Twelve police personnel were also injured in clashes. Farmer organization Samyukt Kisan Morcha holds a nationwide meeting to discuss the next course of action. Elon Musk's social media platform X disagrees with the Indian government's order to block specific accounts and posts as the move is against freedom of expression. But X complies with the government's directive with holding accounts and posts in India as a legal challenge is already pending before the Supreme Court. Defence and space-related stocks jump after government allows 100% FDI in manufacturing of space components and satellite systems. Government expects the move to increase private sector participation. Israel continues to strike Gaza, warns of an intense ground operation in the crowded city of Rafah if Hamas does not return the hostages before Ramadan. The head of the World Health Organization says Gaza has become a death zone. NVIDIA's AI party rolls on revenue from data centers in Q4 is above $18 billion, which is a five-fold increase compared to last year. Profits crossed $12 billion. NVIDIA's market capitalization nears $2 trillion. The Manipur High Court modified its March 2023 order, removed a direction to the state government to consider the inclusion of Metis in the scheduled tribe list. The direction had reportedly led to ethnic clashes of the state. A review petition filed by members of the Methi community argued that the issue of inclusion of a tribe in the ST list is the sole prerogative of the president. CBI raids 30 locations, including three premises linked to former JNK Governor Satyapal Malik as it probes alleged corruption in awarding the contract for a hydro power project. Malik had claimed he was offered 300 crore rupees as a bribe to clear two files when he was governor. He had also blamed the union government for failing to award the 2019 Pulwama terror attack. All right, let's start with today's market action. A late recovery on the last street lifted the Sensex and Nifty. Strong global cues helped the late surge and the Nifty hit a record, a new record for the fourth straight session. Sensex gained over 500 points even as bank stocks or profit booking. Mid-caps outperformed the blue chips. Surbhi Upadhyay is here with the market trap. Well, a big bull charge in the last one hour and a dramatic recovery. That's what Thursday's trade was all about. Remember yesterday, the market hit a fresh intraday high and then slipped. But today, a lot of that was made up. In fact, the Nifty managed a close above 22,000. 200, not just that, mid caps also recovered. So, what led to this? There was a lot of force in the frontline IT part of the market as well as auto. So, your stocks like TCS, Infosys, they were leading from the front, MM, Bajaj Auto, all of these names were really charged up. Uh, the Bank Nifty managed to end off the lows as well, but it was the, the weaker of the, you know, the sectors today in terms of performance, though ICICI Bank contributed, Reliance also, by the way, contribu contributed. So, that was the large cap screen. But let's come to the mid caps because here is where the story was getting even more green. 1% up on the mid-cap index and a positive advanced decline in ratio by the time we closed out. And let's give you a slice of the kind of mid-cap action that we saw today. ABB puts on another 7-8% after yesterday's 10% rally after those good numbers. Indian hotels, Thermax, signed. So mid-caps cutting across sectoral lines doing well. 
By the way, a lot of these space manufacturers had a good session today with 100% FDI being allowed in the sector. So Walchandnagar, MTAR, Apollo Micro, a lot of these smaller companies were up and about buzzing around. PSU saw uh, the buying play out once again. Names like BEL, NBCC, Hindustan Copper, BHEL. Many of these PSU stocks were in the, on the green side of the screen once again. So what today tells us is that it was a classic buy on dips. And that indeed is the nature of this market, which is driven by some very, very strong momentum. On Thank the you. Upside. So before that, the pace of India's manufacturing activity fell to an 18-month low in December. As per the HSBC India Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, the index for December stood at 54.9 compared to 55.5 in November. This drop was largely attributed to slow output growth and lack of new orders. Just for context, PMI reading above 50 indicates expansion, while a reading below 50 denotes a contraction. Japan's benchmark index Nikkei surged to an all-time high after crossing the 39,000 mark in trade. The index surpassed the previous record it had reached more than three decades ago. The recent rally can be largely attributed to strong interest from foreign investors and the rise in semiconductor stocks. The big corporate story, Grassim Industries, has marked its foray in the paint business with Birla Opus. The company has inaugurated three factories in Haryana, Punjab and Tamil Nadu. The company has added that the products will be available to customers in these three states by March this year. Grassim also has planned three more factories in Bengal, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Speaking at the event, Aditya Birla Group Chairman Kumar Mangalam Birla said that the company is aiming to cross 10,000 crore rupees in revenue and turn profitable in three years. The vision is ambitious and our initial goal is clear to clock gross revenues of 10,000 crores and turn profitable not later than the third year of full-scale operations. Our fourth plant in Chamrajnagar we start operations as early as Q1 FI25. The fifth plant in Mahar will roll out by Q2 and the Kharagpur plant will be commissioned by Q4 FI25. 10,000 crores in year three. What is the glide path that you have in year one, year two? And what is your loss estimation before you turn so, profitable? You know, like I said, from a turnover point of view, we would be, when we exit next financial year, we would be more than 5% share. So we would be like high single digits. So you can work backwards what that would mean. Obviously, the business has a glide path where we are going to do higher investments and there would be losses in the first year. But obviously, when we hit the third year, we would turn profitable. So you could work that it's only year one, year two, year three of full operation. So there's not much. Obviously, depending on the market, there could be variances. But I think as a company, as a business, we have told very confidently that our target is to be a bit of positive when we are doing the 10,000 crore. And how long before uh, you turn industry margin, uh, you know, uh, what industry margins are, you'll turn a bit of positive in the third year? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a, you know, that obviously there will be improvement every year and that would take some more time. But we would be, we would be doing and working very efficiently because how to work frugally yeah. is something which is ingrained in us because we are actually a large scale startup and startups always get more from less. The event that we've all been waiting for, Birla's launch of the paint business has finally happened and three key takeaways that have come in from the launch event that was announced. The first big one was the headline. Mr. Kumar Mangla Birla telling you that they are targeting 10,000 crores in terms of revenue for the paint business over the next three years and turning profitable as well. In year three of their operations, 10,000 crores in cross revenue and profitable is a big headline. Why do I say that? Because for uh, you know, perspective, Asian paints trailing 12 months is 35,000 crores. Berger paints is close to around 11,000, 12,000 odd crores. So if the company, Birla's, go ahead and meet this target of theirs, within three years of launch, they would become the third largest players in the paint space in the country and on track to become the second largest profitable players as was earlier guided for as well. The second most important thing that was unprecedented was the scale at which the company's increasing capacity. On day one of launch itself, three factories were launched and also there was a promise of three more factories coming in in just the next two to three quarters, telling you that by the end of FI25, the Birla paint capacity will be close to 1.3 million KLPTA, which makes it the second highest in terms of capacity 
and for perspective again the largest if you compare you know combine the number 2 number 3 and number 4 players in terms of capacity as well the third most important thing that stood out was the scale at which they were looking to increase their reach in the markets 150 depots and also wanting to expand their reach to all towns with over 1 lakh population by july and go beyond that to all towns over 50000 population by the end of this year is something that tells you about their focus in the paint business itself should other paint companies be worried about it well not so much because the paint industry currently is around 80000 crores growing at around 11 to 13% with the top leaders being asian paints and berger paints itself importantly what the company does once it hits the road in terms of markets marketing marketing spends etc and then profitability is something that we will have to watch out for but the near term definitely seems uncertain for paint companies especially given the valuations at which they are trading currently all right uh, moving on defense and space related stocks rose after the government allowed 100% fdi in manufacturing of space components and satellite systems the government expects the move to increase private sector participation hormas fatakia joins us now with the details hormas what does this mean for defense companies now a good news for sure for all of these space co- defense companies the news that came out last night as you are highlighting that the government has approved the 100% fdi in the space sector but they have categorized it into three different sections where the direct route of the fdi has been put under a certain quantum and the rest will be through government approval now i'll start off with the first one where the satellite manufacturing and operations satellite data products and ground segment and user segment will be categorized under the 74% fdi under under the automatic route and in case it goes higher than that it will have to be done under government uh, via government approval the second one being for launch vehicles and associated systems or subsystems and for creation of space ports that is categorized under the 49% automatic route uh, for fdi and the rest will be done through government approval and the last one which is the 100% automatic uh, fdi through the automatic route is for manufacturing of components and systems and subsystems for satellites for the ground segment and for the user segment and as a result of which it as it was good news for all of these companies the stocks were up and about in today's trading session stocks like midani data patterns midani was up 10% data patterns was up 9% it was the best day for midani in 4 months for data patterns it was the best day in 6 months mtr tech the other company involved in this business also had a very good day a 6% gain for mtr tech the good news for the space companies and the stocks were in a different orbit as well today All right uh, thank you Hormaz uh, for that update uh, shifting gears now the tussle between Baiju's investors and founder Baiju Ravindran has intensified the Karnataka High Court has refused to halt the extraordinary general meeting called by a group of shareholders tomorrow CNBC TV18 has already reported removing Baiju Ravindran as the CEO is on the EGM agenda however the court has said that any outcome of the meeting will be subject to its orders Ritu Singh joins us with the details by juice had moved the karnataka high court to challenge the egm called by a group of shareholders tomorrow to ask byju ravindran as ceo and revamp the board but the court has not granted any stay on the egm however the karnataka high court ruled that any decision taken by the shareholders at the meeting will not be given effect to until the next date of hearing at the court which is the 13th of march so in a sense byju did not get a stay on the egm but the outcome of the voting is going to remain subject to the court's final orders now by juice had filed this petition under section 9 of the arbitration and conciliation act arguing that certain investors had violated the articles of association the shareholder agreement and the companies act by calling for this egm by juice had claimed that this was and i quote by juice a smoke screen designed to disrupt the management control and functioning of the company now remember we had reported earlier that a group of shareholders including prosus speak 15 general atlantic the and zuckerberg initiative and others collectively holding more than 30% stake in byju's have called for an egm tomorrow to remove ravindran as the ceo set up a new nine member board for bid founders from transfer of shares and rights etc appoint a forensic auditor to look into the company's dealings and so on now investor sources that we've been speaking to indicate that the egm will go ahead as planned tomorrow because the court has neither stopped this egm or declared it illegal as sought by byju's and so all resolutions are going to be voted upon even if the founders choose not to attend so big day tomorrow to decide
decide on the fate of the company and its founders, subject, of course, to the court's ruling later. Thank you, Ritu. The Enforcement Directorate is conducting searches at the premises of Hiranandani Group in connection with Foreign Exchange Management Act violation. According to sources, around 10 to 12 locations are currently being searched. The investigative agency had received inputs in connection with an alleged foreign exchange violation case based on which the Enforcement Directorate took further action. SpiceJet gained in today's trade after the airline announced it raised over 300 crore rupees more, bringing the total investments under its preferential issue to over 1,000 crores. The airline allotted 4 crore equity shares on a preferential basis to two investors and 2.3 crore warrants to four investors. SpiceJet chairman Ajay Singh said the capital infusion reaffirms investor confidence in SpiceJet's growth prospects. All right, it's time for a short break, but coming up next, Mahindra Group closely contemplating entering the EV cell manufacturing segment. Details when we return. Welcome back. Uh, Mahindra Group is closely contemplating entering the EV cell manufacturing segment. Sources have told CNBC TV18 that the group is considering to set up factories in two to three states and added that getting a PLI approval will be a major factor in the company to make its decision. And uh, Parikshit Lutra joins us uh, with the details. Uh, Parikshit, what are your sources telling you? Sources telling CNBC TV18 that the Mahindra Group is closely contemplating getting into cell manufacturing. The company we learn is exploring locations in two or three states for a possible cell manufacturing plant. The investment plans have not yet been finalized. Getting a PLI approval would be a major factor in the company's decision to set up a cell manufacturing unit. At this stage, the group is considering getting into cell manufacturing for captive consumption or internal use. There is a thinking that a Mahindra-owned cell manufacturing plant will greatly help the company's Born Electric program, Last Mile Mobility and overall EV production. The company had previously indicated in an analyst call that there is an inclination to have their own battery plant, but this needs verification of benefits. PLI incentives are important for the group from a profitability and margin point of view. A domestic cell manufacturing plant would also help the company in meeting domestic value addition criteria under the automotive PLI scheme. The company, along with 17 others like JSW, Hyundai, Reliance, LNT, Excite, and Amara Raja, had participated in a pre bid meeting held recently for the second round of the 18,100 crore ACC PLI scheme. A Mahindra Group spokesperson told CNBC TV18 that the company is currently in the process of finalizing plans for ACC PLI and uh, will announce details in due course. Mahindra Group has not yet applied given the deadline of April 2024. Unquote. Thank you, Parikshit. Uh, moving on, uh, let's take a look at some international news. Uh, AI chip maker NVIDIA, which is at uh, the heart of the artificial intelligence boom, smashed Wall Street's estimates in the fourth quarter. Revenues were over $22 billion, which is a 265% rise compared to last year. Profits are more than $12 billion compared to just a $1 billion one year ago. Chief Executive uh, Jensen Huang said artificial intelligence is hitting the tipping point, adding that demand for the computing power that underlies AI remained astronomical. Google will start manufacturing Pixel phones from India starting next quarter, according to a report by Nikkei Asia. Google shipped over 10 million Pixel phones last year and is hoping to beat that number this year. The shift to India is aimed at reducing the reliance on China and diversifying the supply chain. In a major shake-up at Boeing, E.D. Clark, the head of Boeing's 737 program, has been asked to step down from the company with immediate effect. His exit comes weeks after a door panel on an Alaska Airlines flight blew out mid-air, renewing safety questions. E.D. Clark had been with Boeing for nearly 18 years and led the 737 program since early 2021. Uber Chief Executive Officer Dada Koshroy has said that India is one of the toughest market in the world. He is in Bengaluru and spoke to Infosys co-founder Nandan Nilekani at an event. The Uber CEO said if the company can succeed in the Indian market, it can succeed anywhere in the world. I think that India is one of the toughest markets out there. It is, you know, the Indian customer is so demanding 
and doesn't want to pay for anything. <laughs> And, and, you know, if I view if Uber can make it in India, and I would say, like, our team is really making it here. This is, this is the best of times for Uber in India. I'm so proud of the team. But India is the gateway to the world for us. This is, this is the toughest market to succeed in. But if we succeed in here, that sets a standard for us to succeed in so many other markets. And before we wrap, world leaders and business honchos uh, will be jet-setting to Jamnagar for the pre-wedding celebrations of Anand Ambani, the son of Reliance Chairman Mukesh Ambani and Radhika Merchant scheduled in early March. The wedding is set to take place on the 12th of July. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, Micro Microsoft founder Bill Gates, Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger and legendary investors Ray Dalio and Howard Marks are expected to fly down to Jamnagar. BlackRock Chairman Larry Fink's name is also on the guest list. Other likely attendees include James Murdoch of Lupa Systems, General Atlantic's Bill Ford, Ajit Jain of Berkshire Hathaway and Morgan Stanley CEO Ted Pick. Abu Dhabi National Oil Company CEO Sultan Ahmad Al Jaber is also on the attendees list. And with that's a wrap on this edition of Business 360. More news and updates continue on the other side. Stay tuned.